Hello there, this is Mr. Seventies Roche, and welcome to Mr. Roche's Flip Class Math 10 No Frills, No Thrills, Low Budget, Low Tech videos. This particular unit will be on relations and functions, and part one and two will be reviewing the key concepts covered in Math 9. In this part one, we'll be talking about some of the relations vocabulary, including uh, things like uh, independent and dependent variables, discrete versus continuous graphs, and so on. We'll also be talking about the seven different ways to represent relations, and talking about the Cartesian coordinate system, and doing one example that'll kind of summarize some of that stuff up. So, don't forget, cameraman's Mr. Wilson, and I'll be sitting him down over there so he can operate the camera. Okay. First of all, a relation is simply a comparison between two sets of elements. Those elements are usually some sort of numerical data. In that two sets, we have an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable is the one that we can choose any value of, and it's easiest if we always choose a value for independent and then find a dependent or vice versa. So therefore, the dependent variable will depend on what we chose for the independent one. That will start making sense when we look at graphs and we look at equations and so on. So, kind of in a little summary table here, we have independent and dependent. If we list it this way, like in a table of values, the independent will always be on the left, dependent on the right. If we're using x and y, always at x and left, y and the right. We can also call this side the inputs and the outputs. So we put a value in and we calculate a value out. Okay? If this were graphed, the independent or the x value always goes on the horizontal axis, whereas the dependent or the y value or the output goes on the, y, on the vertical axis. And finally, you may or may not have heard of these terms, but all the values of the independent variable will make up the domain, and for the dependent variable will make up the range. First we're going to talk about continuous versus discrete graphs. Okay, we can talk about these being continuous and discrete variables or graphs. Uh, they're go, they go on hand in hand. So, example, time and height. Okay, so let's say we're uh, graphing an uh, airplane taking off. Okay, so perhaps at this point he was, uh, the plane was here and it gradually took off going this direction. So this time could be in seconds and the height could be in meters. And of course these don't have to go up one, two, three, they can be whatever scale we want. Okay, that's a linear relation because it's a straight line. Uh, but what's important here is there are values between here. So if these are seconds, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, there is a height for 1.5 seconds or 2.1 seconds or even like a pi seconds, 3.14, da 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 da. So there's values all the way between these, okay? So it's a continuous, no matter what value I take for the independent variable, 4.31876, there's gonna be a value for it in height, okay? So that makes that a continuous variable, that time in this case. The height is also continuous because there is a time when the height is going to be exactly uh, 49.3 meters. Okay, so the, the graph is also continuous. However, discrete variables have some limitations to those values that we choose. So for example, let's say I'm renting a car and it costs so much per day. Okay, so I've done a simple graph here. We have number of days, so this might be zero days, one, two, three, four, and the cost will be however much, so it might be $20, $40, whatever, okay? so. We're going to have a certain cost associated with one day, and a certain cost associated with two days, and with three days, and with four days. But I can't go and say, how much will 1.9 days cost me? Or how much will, be, uh, will three and a half days cost? Because they just go by a per day cost. So I would not join these little X's here, or my points on the graph, with a line. They are discrete points. And that way, it's a discrete graph. So in this case, even though this is time and so is this, in this case, this is a discrete variable that we're comparing. Okay?
Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is that seven ways to represent a relation. Many of these we did in grade nine. Uh, in fact, all but this one was probably discussed at some point. First of all, we have words. So, that's not words, that's an equation. But let's say the words were something like a value is determined by decreasing double an original number by five, or something like that. So double an original number by five will determine some value. Okay, so we can go from words to an equation, or an equation back to words again. Um, let's just play with that relation right there for a minute. I'm going to give it some values. Uh, so, if my original value was zero, then that uh, my new value, if my original value is zero, that's two times zero is zero, minus five is negative five. Okay, so zero would give me negative five. One, the original value of one, two times one is two, minus five is, would give me negative three. Two would give me negative one, that's an arrow. Three would give me positive one, and so on. Okay, and there's no limit, I could go on forever. And I could also go down, I could put negative one in here, which would be negative seven, negative one would be, give me negative seven. Okay, when we use arrows like this, where this becomes this, or this is some function of this, that's called mapping when we use arrows. Okay? So you'll see that these are very closely related. In fact, if I was to say these are values for x and these are values for my y, this is now a table of values. Table of values is always the independent variable and the dependent variable. In this case, we're comparing x to y's. Okay? Sometimes this might be uh, other variables. It could be something like uh, t for time and c for cost or whatever, in which case these would change as well. Okay, and now for ordered pairs, I can even adapt this list. And these become individual ordered pairs that I could plot on a graph. And we'll be talking more about the Cartesian coordinate system in a minute. Okay, this is the equation right there. So in this case, y equals 2x minus 5 is an equation. And this is a very popular way to do it is the dependent variable equals and then some function of an uh, independent variable. We can, there are other forms which we'll be getting to later. The graph, of course, is when we graph those points on the graph. Okay, so we put these in 0, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 1, negative 3. Uh, so 1, negative 3, and 2, negative 1, and 2, negative 1, and 3, 1. And you join those up, and we get some sort of a line. Okay? Function notation, we have not talked about function notation yet. This is new for grade 10, so I'll not talk about it at this time. Okay, let's talk for a minute about the, car, uh, the coordinate plane, or commonly called the Cartesian coordinate system. The reason it's called this is named after a French mathematician named Descartes, and that was hundreds of years ago, I believe, back in the 1600s. He came up with this way of being able to plot a point on a two-dimensional grid, only length and width, hence the plane. And what he came up with is something very simple. Of course, this would work really good on grid paper. These are my values for my x, or my independent variable. This is y, or my dependent variable. And these could go up by 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, just like a horizontal number line. And these go up by 1s, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like a thermometer or a vertical number line. Okay, so we can plot points on here if we know the coordinates of those points. For example, let's say I want to figure out the coordinates of this point right here. Okay. I always start at the beginning, or the middle, hence the word origin, means the beginning. Okay, and this has coordinates 0, 0. Okay, the first coordinate will always uh, correspond to left, right. If it's positive, we move right, negative, we move, uh, move down. The second one is always my y coordinate, and it's up and down. Positive's up, negative's down. Okay, so if I want to find the coordinates of this point, to get there, first I move left and right, so I've got to move right one, now I'm directly below it. 
And then I gotta go up one, two, three. So that's one, three. Okay, the coordinates of this point here are one, sorry, one, two, so it's two to the left and one down. So that would be two to the left and one down. The coordinates of this point, I have to move one, two, three, four to the right, so it's positive four, but I didn't go up and down at all, so it's four, zero. And let's do one more. Um, let's say, I, actually I'll do the reverse. This time I'll give you the coordinates and you can try and figure out where it goes. Um, if I have the coordinates uh, negative four, three, Okay, I would start here. I'd have to go left four because it's negative. One, two, three, four. And then up three because it's positive. One, two, three. It would be right about there. Okay, so that is negative four, three. All these pairs of coordinates are called ordered pairs. Okay, and they all have a specific spot somewhere on this coordinate plane. Now, oh, what else could I tell you? There's four regions, which we call quadrants. Quadrant meaning four, it makes sense. This is the most popular quadrant because it's positive and positive. In fact, we see this graph a lot in science when we're plotting uh, you know, values of height and time or something like that. So that's the most popular, so it's quadrant one. This is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And we could use regular numerals as well, one, two, three, four. But we will talk about quadrants quite a bit, so make sure you know where those are. And that's about all I have to show you about the coordinate plane right now. Finally, let's do an example. Okay, in my example, I'm going to talk about going to a fair. In this particular fair, there is a fence around it, and there's a gate, and you have to go in and pay an like, uh, entry fee of $10. And once you're in there, it's going to cost you, let's say, $3 per ride. And we're going to try and make a table of values for how much it would cost for a various number of rides. So if we go on zero rides, it would still cost me $10 because I have to get into the place. If I went on one ride, if it costs $3 a ride, then it's the $10 it cost me to get in plus another $3 is $13. If I go on two rides, it would cost another $3, which is $16. Three rides, which is $19. And finally, four rides is uh, $22. And of course we could go on and on, but let's say we uh, only had a certain amount of time and we only went on four rides. Okay? So first of all, if I graph those results, I would not need these quadrants, so I'm just going to highlight this quadrant because we're dealing with positive values. Remember, these become my ordered pairs. So 0, 10 would be about here. 1, 13 might be here. Uh, 2, 16 might be here. 319 might be here, and 422 might be here, and there we have, and in this case, let me ask you something, should I go on forever? Well, first of all, no, we shouldn't go on forever because I said we only had time for four rides, so it should stop. Now, another thing that I've done is I joined those dots, and I shouldn't have. Why? Because these are discrete variables. I cannot go on one and a half rides. I cannot go on 2.956 rides. I can only go on whole number rides. So I shouldn't have joined those. So in fact, this, zero, one, two, three, one more. That is an accurate graph of that data. Okay? Identify the independent and dependent variables. This is my independent. I can go on as many of those rides as I want or have time for or money for. And then this is my dependent variable, because the cost that I pay will depend on how many rides I go on. Are the variables, uh, are the variables continuous or discrete, or, are, or will the graph be continuous or discrete? Well, as you can see, it will be discrete, because there's no, uh, there's no values for two and a half rides or whatever. 